Those are extremely difficult things to figure out, especially if you can't see it. <laughs> and so that blew his mind. And he started to like continue to investigate, and he found that there was some incredible mathematical recurrence in all of the measurements that he was taking. And that recurrence, these mathematics that kept on creeping up were always the same. And they and he figured out that they were pointing out to the mathematics of a sphere and a tetrahedron embedded in it. And that's why he put that graphic in his paper, saying that if these people were trying to communicate something to us, they were trying to tell us about a sphere and a tetrahedron. He didn't notice, though, that even that city, right beside Mexico City, that ancient city, is exactly at 19.47 latitude on the Earth as well. So not only does it have the mathematics of a tetrahedron in a sphere in all of its layouts, but as well it is placed on the Earth exactly where a tetrahedron would intersect a sphere. What's the, what's the third point? Well, this is this is a grand circle, you know, all around the all around the Earth. So depending on where you put this point, these other points will move, right? But if you put this point at uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, then this uh, then. Um, uh, Mexico City is somewhere in the middle here in between these two points. This one is near the coast of Africa, I believe. And then this one is India. The Daikini temples in India. And so, I was, you know, I was amazed that this engineer had come up with it. And I was confirming you know, that like, imagine that there is a fundamental structure to the vacuum, that there is a fundamental structure to reality. You would expect that throughout the ages, we would have come up with it because it would be inherent in us. It would be oozing out of us. So I thought maybe they came up with this then. But I knew there was something wrong because a tetrahedron on its own is not in equilibrium. And I knew the vacuum geometry had to be in perfect equilibrium. So I had to find something else. Well, at the end of his essay, Hugh Holliston Jr. mentioned a very important thing, the isotropic vector metric from Buckminster Fuller. He said that the mathematical constant that he got from his surveying of that ancient city pointed out to the square root of 9 over 8, which is the mathematical constant for an isotropic vector metric generated by Buckminster Fuller. Bucky thought that this metric was the fundamental mathematical blueprint of the universe. Well, Bucky was quite eccentric. However, many of the things that Bucky came up with were later confirmed. So he's getting more and more um, acceptance of his work, although he's not around to appreciate it anymore. But the blueprint of the universe he taught was the isotropic vector metric. What is this thing? It's 10 tetrahedron on the bottom. This is called a three, a four frequency isotropic vector metric. So 10 uh, tetrahedrons on the bottom, three in the middle. Uh, I'm sorry, six in the middle, three on, on top, and then one, making a huge tetrahedron 
on its own. Can everybody see this? So there's actually 20 tetrahedron in an isotropic vector metric. And if you take only one face of the isotropic vector metric, right, just, just a plane of it, then you have uh, four faces on the bottom, three faces on the second level, uh, two faces on the third level, and one face on top. Everybody sees this? Okay. Well, when I found the isotropic vector metric, I thought, well, I'm interested about negative space. So let me take off the tetrahedrons and see what's in between them. So I did that, and when I did that, I realized what was in between the tetrahedrons. They're octahedrons. Do I have a little octahedron somewhere? Oh, I know. I guess it got destroyed. The glue while I was traveling melted with this 108 degree heat we've been having. Um, so I lost some of my models. But uh, an octahedron is a pyramid with another one below it emphasis on the word pyramid. So I was happy to find that the, pyramid, the pyramidal geometry was present between the tetrahedrons. Can everybody see how an octahedron is two pyramids base to base? If this is one point of the pyramid, then the base is here, and it's a square base, looks rectangular because it's in perspective, and the other point is here, right? Two pyramids base to base. There is a bunch of them together, but when I did this, I realized there was something weird. There was something weird in the middle of the metric. Because the metric is called isotropic. So you would expect that it would be always um, in balance, that it would always be in symmetry. But there was a symmetry in the middle. I found four reverse tetrahedron pointing down and rotated 180 degrees. And they didn't belong to the octahedron, and they didn't belong to the tetrahedrons that made up the outside or the metric. So there was a bunch of these, there was four of these tetrahedrons completely out of place, creating a symmetry in the middle of symmetry. Now I knew this had to be incomplete, because if this was the fundamental structure of the vacuum, it had to be isotropic and symmetric so that you would have perfect equilibrium. Oh, there's an octahedron. Thank you. Ooh, nice. Cutest. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate. Cutest with what? Honey? Rubber cement. <laughs> Here's an octahedron. And so when, uh, yeah, that, that wouldn't melt as well. Oh, that's good. Because um, I used to do it with marshmallows, but then people would grab the marshmallows and eat them. And I lose my mouth. But anyway, so um, the, uh, the isotropic vector metric had to be modified. I didn't know how. One thing I was sure of is that the universe is polarized, so that it had to be two. Okay, now if you have a polarized universe and you have two isotropic vector metrics and they're mirroring each other, you have a problem because the two mirroring each other base to base don't make a sphere. Remember fundamental.